All right, deep valve spear crew for another adventure. He's in his usual 14 year old bad mood. Say hello. Well, we knew, no, he dive charters. Captain Andy right here. Dive Master Megan. Got some guests right here. All right, all right. Here we go. All right, and we're underwater. Heading down the anchor rope right here. I turn around and look to make sure Gaines is okay. He's still a new diver, so we're just making sure that his mask is clear and he's ready to go. You can see the visibility is awesome. You can see the tug down in front of us. I get loaded up and see some Amico Jacks. Head down to see a big, big gag grouper. Turns out there were several of them on this wreck. They're out of season, so we couldn't do anything with them. So the game starts hunting for lionfish and I head around looking for mangrove snapper or anything that's in season. You can see tons of bait fish, ruby red lips, just uh, perfect vis visibility. Great, great dive. So around this corner, quite a few illegal red snapper, Amico jacks. Right here I spot a huge lionfish going up the ship slider and I give Gaines the wave and tell him to come over and kill these lionfish. And it turns out there were some on the other side of the ladder that I couldn't see and so he started shooting them. And I head around the house looking for something to shoot and Look inside and see some legal red snapper, but they're out of season, so we couldn't shoot those. Lots of amberjack, short amberjack, and they're out of season also. Very few things in season. I spot a nice mangrove snapper. It comes in, it's kind of shifty, and turns, and I take a shot and connect. Try to get in quick. I'm trying not to pull a fish to me. That way I don't pull them off the spear. I've made that mistake before, so I try to swim to them. And you'll notice whenever the camera pans back around, I had a scamp grouper come out and say hello. Interesting, when you shoot one fish, other ones kind of show up. And so as quick as I could, I tried to dispatch this one, get him on the stringer. Gained to come over to show me some, show me some line fish he'd shot. He was working on those. And so I get this mangrove on the snapper and I can see the scamp still sitting right over there where I saw him come out from under the tug. I'm trying to get reloaded pretty quickly. I shoot a big Koa roller gun, but I usually only load one band. Whenever I'm shooting on a wreck like this, I have shot two bands right into the steel hole and blended my tip. That's never a good day and you have to get the grinder out. Here I get reloaded until gains to move. And you'll see the scam grouper. He's looking at me and I'm sizing him up and he's sizing me up. And if you look to the right, right as I'm about to shoot him, a nice legal mangrove snapper comes swooping in right there over the edge of the ship. And he goes down to the scamp and spooks the scamp. And I take the shot and connect. It wasn't a great shot right on top of the head, but like I said, I swam in, picked him up and went in and dispatched him. The rest of the dive is pretty uneventful. I'm looking for trigger fish that are in season. So we search the tug right here and there's a landing, a World War II landing craft about 15 to 20 yards off of this wreck. And so we search this wreck and then we head over to it and you'll see in a few minutes, we can make our way over to that. See some other huge guy grouper, 15 to 20 pound grouper. There's tons of bait fish, tons of I guess they're called glass minnows, is what I'll call them. Take a look inside of the house of the wreck right here, just seeing if there's anything peeking out.
Right here you can look up and see, you see as the camera pans up, you can see the Amber Jack and the Amico Jacks. And the sun, we're at 92 feet and you can see the sun. I most like you were outside, just how great the visibility was. And back where we started right here. Usually whenever you're spear fishing these wrecks, after your first shot or two, a lot of your huntable species other than your jacks and your legal red snapper, a lot of times the red snapper, they leave the wreck and go out into the sand. Your mangrove snapper and your grouper, things like that, they tuck up inside of the holes. So once you shoot a couple times, you have to really search these holes. But we're diving with steel ladies in about 90 feet of water. So we only had about 25 to 30 minutes of dive time on those tanks. And uh, trying not to go in deco, really only had about 15 to 20 minutes down at that depth anyway. So the 80s and that depth kind of worked really well. That usually equates to get down and finding a couple of fish, taking a few shots, and then usually it's about a thousand pounds. When you get about a thousand pounds in your rig, it's time to make your way back to the anchor rope and make it back up by the time you do your deco stop you'll hit the surface with about 500 pounds of air. And that's really what your dive master and also your captains, they don't want you to come up with anything less than 500 pounds of air. That just makes for a scary dive if you do. So when I'm diving, I'm having to watch my 14 year old. This is uh, I think his 23rd or 24th dive. So he's not a brand new diver, but I still have to keep an eye on him and hunting fish and keep an eye on my own regulators and things like that. So it makes for a, an eventful dive when you're trying to keep up with your teenager and spearfish and watch for all the hidden dangers that can come along with diving. You can see the landing craft off in the distance. My call gains over and we swim over there here in just a few minutes. As we approach the landing craft, it really is just the stern that's left. Look to the right, and you'll see the big yag grouper swim out and start swimming back in toward the wreck. They tuck up inside of the, this uh, stern of this landing craft. I see a legal trigger fish right there in front of me, and you can tell they've been hunted um, for a while because he, he's really shifty. A lot of times when you're shooting trigger fish, if they haven't been spooked, having a shot at a lot, this one right up to you, but this guy, he kept tucking inside of the wreck. And when Gaines gets over, Gaines will go down on the side and he'll come out and then go back in. And if you'll watch, I'll, I'm kind of floating over the wreck about 15 feet over it. And Gaines is looking for lionfish. Not really much left of this wreck. Here in just a few minutes, you'll see as I'm looking down in the hole right there, you'll see the gag, a big gag come out, take a look, and then tuck back in. If it was gag season, I would be down there in that hole trying to get a shot on that gag. This one's out right here. There he is. About a 15 or 20 pound gag. Just a really nice dive. Like I said, not much. More, not much more going on after uh, that shot in that scamp. But we really enjoyed the dive. Gaines enjoys killing lionfish. And there's plenty of them around. So boy, about this point in the dive, we've seen everything, everything there is to see right here. And we start heading back over to the main wreck, the, big, the tug. And when we get there, the rest of the dive group has made it down. Whenever you're spearfishing, you want to try to be the first in. and. Uh, that way you can take a few shots at the fish before they get spooky. And by the time we get back over there, the rest of the dive group has made it in. And uh, Gaines and I are down to about a thousand pounds. You can see I call him up out of the sand, trying to keep him out of deco at 90 feet. 
I'm trying to teach him that with this kind of quarter clarity, this depth, you have to stay up off of the sand, off the bottom. You need to stay up about 20 to 25 feet. If you see something that you would like to shoot, you drop down and take a look and try to get a shot. At this point, I'm telling him I've got a thousand pounds, and he says he does too. And I say, let's head to the anchor rope. You can see our dive buddies making their way down. They just started their dive, and we we're ending ours, which works out well. Anytime you're on a dive charter and you've got spear fishermen and you've got sightseers, always try to let the spear fishermen get in first so they can get a few shots off before the fish gets spooky. There's plenty of sights in whenever, even after the shots. These jacks, these Almaco jacks, and these short amber jacks, they, it doesn't bother them. They just swim up above the wreck. And so it gains a nice slowly just making her way up to the surface, just taking her time with the anchor rope. We did do a second dive this day. We did a drift dive over some pyramids. If you check out my other video, my clean and cook of lionfish, you can see that uh, we shot some lionfish on some pyramids. Water cleared it was really good. The GoPro angle wasn't great, and so I didn't share much of that footage. You can see some of it on the clean and cook video for lionfish. Quick shout out to Captain Andy Ross and Dive Master Megan for showing us a good time on Naui Dive Charters out of Pensacola, Florida. We appreciate it. Remember to subscribe to our channel and Deep Dive Spear Crew out.